Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If we can settle down and then we'll make a start. So good morning and welcome to Cornwall Council's annual general meeting. In accordance with this council's constitution, I, Melanie O'Sullivan, Monitoring Officer for Cornwall Council, will be dealing with the administrative business up to and including the appointment of the chair of this meeting, where I will then more than happily hand over to the chairman of the council. We are operating today's proceedings in a COVID safe environment, so please ensure that you social distance, face masks are to be worn at all times unless you're speaking, hand sanitizer is available on your desk there. So please help us to help create a safe environment for you. So I'm going to move on to item one on the agenda, which is prayers. And thankfully, I'm going to hand over to Councillor Sean Tilby, who will lead the council in prayers. Councillor Tilby. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, if we could give a few minutes silence uh, in thanks for us all arriving here safely this morning. And also to be mindful of those who are still suffering from all kinds of diversities. And in particular, those who are still suffering and have suffered through this pandemic. Thank you. Most gracious Lord, we seek the guidance of your Holy Spirit in all business matters that are laid before the elected members and staff of Cornwall Council here today. And we give thanks, O Lord, for those in public life that readily give their time without question, that all tactics here employed may be tempered by compassion and decisions are informed by wisdom. In particular, Holy Father, we thank you for those whilst in planning for the future of this council. Give us vision in matters of finance. Give us responsibility in dealing in a positive manner for all Cornwall's residents, be they young or elderly members of this wonderful community. That we as a council show compassion and love, whatever adversities they face, and through your guidance, O oh Lord, we prove our worthiness and knowledge of our own responsibilities. Cleanse us all, gracious Lord, of every tendency of self-interest interest, and inspire the ideal of serving others in all deliberations and ever exercise of political power. O oh Lord, we pray for those who serve in local government, and most gracious Queen Elizabeth, for the Prime Minister, all those that serve in central government, and for all those who assist and advise. Let us sum up all our intentions in the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour has taught us, and we are proudly to say, if we can say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, Councillor Tilby. So, members, moving on then to item two on your agenda. This is apologies for absence. I've had apologies from Councillor um, Colin Martin. Uh, can members raise your hands if you're aware of any others? That's no further apologies. Oh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Taylor. Thank you. Um, if I can just ask we use the mics, um, we are recording. So just a reminder, hopefully you've all been shown the mics in front of you there. We are live streaming this meeting today. Um, so if I can ask you to uh, use your mics. And I've noticed that apology. Council Thank you, Councillor Taylor. I don't see any further apologies in the room. Therefore, I will move on to item three on the agenda, which is election of chairman. 
Before seeking nominations for chairman, please be aware that prior to the vote, each candidate will be asked to make a brief speech on the reasons they wish to be nominated and their vision for the role. In the event there is only one candidate, they will still be expected to make such a speech. I will therefore now call for nominations for appointment of chairman of the council. Each nomination will need a seconder. Unless a ballot is demanded under Rule 16.4 of the Constitution, I will take the vote for election of the chairman and vice chairman by a show of hands. In accordance with paragraph 16.6 of the Constitution, if there are more than two people nominated for any position to be filled and there is not a clear majority of votes in favour of one person, then the name of the person with the least number of votes will be taken off the list and a new vote taken. The process will continue until there's a clear majority of votes for one person. So please can I call for nominations for chairman. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Acting Chair. I'm very pleased to make the proposal of Councillor Pauline Giles for the chair. And is it at this point I say why I'm wishing to propose her? Please do, Councillor Thank Taylor. You. <clears throat> the chairman is the ceremonial head of the council, acting as an ambassador for Cornwall and fostering community identity and pride. I first met Pauline as a bank manager. No, she was not asking for money. She came in to talk to the, uh, our, our banking group about a charity that she'd set up, which was called Bosom Buddies. Her talk was so persuasive, her charity became the bank's charity for that particular year. Pauline is a woman tornado. So imagine my surprise to find Pauline and myself as the new Conservative intakes in 2017. Since becoming a councillor, Pauline has created the St Blasey Recycle, Reuse, Resale. Such was her determination to get this project off the ground. One senior member who met the force of Pauline and assisted in this project has left Cornwall and gone to the Arza Silly. <laughs> However, Paul Masters, she has your telephone number. <laughs> Pauline has been recognised by the Prime Minister as a true point of light within her community. And this, was, this award was made even more special because the rec recognition was given on St Piran's Day. Pauline cares deeply about her community and has demonstrated that commitment even more so during the pandemic. Hopefully, many of you may have caught up with Pauline during her online cookery lessons. And in her new role, we may all get taught how to make pasties. The role of the chair is the human face of this council. And I know that Pauline will bring her warmth, her humour and her compassion to the role. Cornwall, please be prepared to meet Pauline. Share your everyday experiences with her. Invite her to meet your community and to share in your significant events. I have had the privilege of knowing Pauline better since that 2017 intake. And my life has been enriched by her company. And I'm extremely proud to propose Pauline Giles, the maid of par, as the council's next chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Uh, and please can I have a seconder for that nomination, Councillor Toms. Um, thank you, uh, Melanie, uh, for allowing me to second Pauline Giles as a, uh, the chairman of the council. I want to impart some wisdom, I would say, to her. I've been here 18 years now, and I've seen chairmen come and go. But you follow two of the best chairmen that we've had in this council, um, Councillor Mary May and Councillor Hilary Frank, were outstanding bastions of that post. Um, in that post, in that post, they showed humility, they led from the front, and they engaged with the public outside of these four walls. I've known Pauline now for four years, um, and I know the work she does in many communities 
with people that are the most vulnerable and deprived in Cornwall. I sincerely hope she brings those traits to this council chamber and I wish her well and I second her nomination. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Toms. So are there any other nominations for chairman? So I have no further nominations for chairman recorded. I will therefore ask Councillor Giles to make a statement. Councillor Giles. Good morning, everyone. I may not speak Cornish, but you can't get much more Cornish than me. When I'm out of county, I wish I had a pound for everyone who said to me, you Cornish, and then want to tell me about the wonderful memories they have of our great county. I'm a 50-something 50, 50 proud mum of two grown-up children, both who live and work in London. I personally understand the need to attract more industry and better paid jobs to Cornwall in order to stem the tide of our talented youngsters crossing the Tamar. I'm a bit of a note writer, and Dave, as my partner and dedicated wingman would say, a control freak. Not a bad thing in a chairman's role, as it will ensure that timely, relevant and accurate information is put before you. It is my aim to chair four council meetings in a completely fair and honourable way. There will be no favouritism towards any specific political party, and I can assure you that everyone will be given a ver the very same opportunity, especially if it is the intention to help the people of Cornwall. They are, after all, the very people who have put us here. Those who know me know I approach everything I do with a passion. I'm driven and given to, with all my few enthusiasm and energy. You will only need to look at, the, at what I have achieved at St Blasey Recycle Resurgery Sale to see that I aim to use the similar qualities in the chair. So buckle up. <laughs> COVID has changed us, changed our thoughts, actions and indeed our vision for the future. I want to embrace this using far more social media engagement through videos, days out on the job with our service providers and personal appearances. We need to proactively show the people of Cornwall that we get them. We too are residents and want all the things that improve their daily lives as well. My strengths are compassion, fairness and a genuine desire for positive change. I have a passion running through my veins. I'm a Cornish maid. I'm a St Blasey maid. <laughs> Let me be your ambassador, Team Cornwall, for one and all. Thank you, Councillor Giles. So there being only one nomination, that is Councillor Giles, I'll ask for a show of hands in favour of Councillor Giles' appointment as chairman. So can all those members four please show your hands now? Against, please, members, please show your hands now. And any abstentions, please show your hands now. Thank you, members. That concludes that vote, and I can hereby confirm that Councillor Giles is duly elected as Chairman of Cornwall Council. Councillor Giles, come and take your seat.
Thank you, everybody. This is a huge honour. Uh, we will move on to agenda, agenda, agenda item number four, election of vice chairman. As previously, please be aware that prior to the vote, each candidate will be asked to make a brief speech on the reasons why they wish to be nominated and their vision for the role. In the event that there is only one candidate, they will still be expected to make a speech. I will now call for nominations for the election of Vice Chairman of the Council. Councillor Taylor. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair, and welcome to a well-deserved seat. Thank you. I am very pleased to propose Jordan Rouse to the Chair, the position of Vice Chair. Jordan, how do you follow Pauline Giles? Well, for a start, you've got the advantage of youth and very long names. <laughs> Jordan is a campaigner, a strategist, and an excellent counsellor for his community. And he's worked with Pauline very successfully over the last four years. Jordan went into the new seat of Bethel and Holmbush and got a majority of 848. Jordan relates to all, to all ages but is an inspiration for what you can do as a younger member within your community. And also shows that opportunities for elected members are open to all. When we got together as a group in those early days of 2017, I do remember hearing from Councillor David Harris that he had whiskey older than Jordan. <laughs> but this just goes to show you don't have to be vintage to succeed. Jordan and Pauline will be dynamic in their working relationship, and I am very pleased and proud to propose Councillor Jordan Rouse for the role of Vice Chair of Cornwall Council. Yeah. Can I have somebody to second, please? Councillor Cole. Thank you, Chair, and may I add my congratulations on your election as well. This authority, I think, has been very fortunate with councillors who've served as chairman and vice chairman in recent years. Each has sought to bring an inclusive approach to this chamber and to do their very best to ensure that everyone can properly participate in council business while at the same time being respected figureheads for this council across Cornwall. With this tradition in mind, I'm pleased to be able to support Jordan Rouse as Vice Chairman of Cornwall Council. I've known Jordan for a number of years, uh, various committees such as the Cornish National Minority Working Group where we've done great work, electoral review panel where we've grappled with parish council boundaries, and as an employee of local members of parliament. And I've got to say, speaking as I find, in all my dealings with Jordan, I found him to be very open, approachable, and also not averse to working across political boundaries. I see Jordan as someone who's extremely straightforward, and I'm confident that he'll be an inclusive vice chairman who will be there for one and all. So I'm very happy to formally second Jordan Rouse to be the next vice chairman of Cornwall Council. Thank you. Do I have uh, any other nominations? Jordan, it's over to you. Thank you, De Thank you, Chair and DIFDAR members. Firstly, may I offer my warmest congratulations to you, Councillor Giles, and say how proud I am of you to see you take your seat at the front today. What a privilege it would be to continue working with you side by side, as we have done for the past four years in Par and St Blasey. I also want to pay tribute to Councillor Frank and Councillor May for all their hard work over the past four years, particularly through what has been a very trying and difficult year for everyone in Cornwall. As we begin to ease out the current coronavirus restrictions, and with a newly elected council, I really do hope this is the start of an exciting chapter for Cornwall. Like many of you, I was excited to be back in the council chamber today. It's great to see so many old friends and new faces. After four years, I thought I would have outgrown the role of baby of the chamber, but it looks like I'm stuck with that title again. <laughs> what I will say, it is great to see more young, enthusiastic members. This is reflective of our efforts to make this chamber as diverse as possible. 
to represent everyone who lives in Cornwall. Four years ago, when I was first elected as a fresh-faced 20-year-old, it was a pretty daunting experience. I didn't really know what to do or what to expect or what was to come. All I knew was that I had a job to do, to represent the people of Parr and Biscovay and the good people of Cornwall. In that respect, not a lot has changed in four years. Here I am, a bit older, a bit wiser, a few more grey hairs, but with the same job on my hands, to do the best for the good people of Bethel and Homebush and St Austell, who put their trust in me, and for all those in every corner of Cornwall. This time, however, I find myself in a position of asking fellow friends from across the chamber for your support to appoint me as Vice Chairman of Cornwall Council. And my nomination reflects the change in dynamic here at County Hall. Usually, those who are put forward as Vice Chair of the Council are proposed for what they have done for Cornwall, a recognition of achievement. My appointment remains a recognition, but more so a recognition about what I can offer Cornwall as opposed to what I have done. This is the change in dynamic, forward-looking, future-proofing. In a couple of weeks' time, Cornwall will host the world leaders for the G7 Summit. We need a legacy to be left in Cornwall after the event, and I firmly believe a legacy should be something that money can't buy, inspiring a generation. I would hope that my appointment may just go a little way towards that. I must admit, it's quite extraordinary that a 20-year-old four years ago was elected to Cornwall Council. It's even more extraordinary that four years later, that same person might well just become Vice Chairman of Cornwall Council. But that's the beauty of it, because there is nothing extraordinary about me. I come from St Blasey, one of the poorest and most deprived areas in the country. Didn't get the best grades, didn't go to university, but with a bit of grit, determination, some desire, ambition and compassion, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. The only reason we're all here today is because of democracy. Democracy is about people, and Pauline and I are here to support every one of you in this chamber. You have our word. People come before politics, and that's something we firmly believe in. We are all equal in this council chamber, and it is our role to ensure that all of Cornwall's residents have a strong voice here in County Hall. It is also our job to be the face of this organisation, and what great ambassadors for Cornwall you have in us. Cornish born, Cornish bred. We will be fair, and we will have some fun, and by working together, we can make Cornwall the best possible place to live, work and grow up in for one and all. Muras, thank you. There being only one nomination, that of Councillor Rouse, I will ask for a show of hands in favour of Councillor Rouse's appointment. Hands down, please. And those against? Any abstentions? I declare Councillor Rouse duly elected as the Vice Chairman of Cornwall Council.
Get on that St. Blasey boy. <laughs> Agenda item five, declarations of interest. In accordance with the constitution, I will now take declarations of interest from any members for any items on the agenda. Will members please indicate any items on which they have interest and the nature of those interests? If you're aware uh, that you have a disclosable pecuniary interest or non-registrable interest in any matter being considered on the agenda, you must disclose it, whether or not you have already entered it into the register. Councillor Tao. A pecuniary interest in the uh, Hackney Carriage um, item. Agenda number six, Chairman's announcements. I'm, I'm taking the opportunity here to set my stall out and let you know the sort of uh, chairman I'm possibly likely to be. Uh, before I start, I would like to pay tribute to the two previous councillors who served this council as chair. I watched on as a new councillor when Mary May and then Harry Frank oversaw full council meetings and worked incredibly hard to uphold the good name of Cornwall Council throughout the duchy and in their civic duties. I am honoured to follow in your footsteps, uh, of uh, the, the footsteps of these two long, strong and inspirational ladies, and I thank them for their dedicated service. When Linda asked me what I thought the role of the chair was, after four years of being a councillor, I felt equipped to answer. It's the promoter of Cornwall, it's council and people, having the ability to build on customer communications and stakeholder trust and surrounded by a great team, the upholder of the law and its decision-making and policies. A team builder, but also a team player, who exercises fairness and integrity at all times. From Saltash to Senan, Bew to Bodman, and yes, St. Blasey, Blasey to St. Just, we over ourselves are all residents of this wonderful county, custodians and future planners. I know I can put my trust in you lovely people, to work through scrutiny and leadership to make the best decisions for this duchy. I said to Councillor Taylor, I want to be the Annika Rice of Cornwall. And she said, There's no money in the budget for a helicopter. <laughs> I'm the first to admit I haven't got the body for a lycra, so I've had to have a rethink. <laughs> White, quite round, often firm, swells up in the eight. Perhaps I'm better suited as arboreo rice. <laughs> My tenure will be very much heart-centred, a bridge builder whose door is always open to all members. We have a golden opportunity to make a huge difference to Cornwall. Let's get started. I'm so delighted that Jordan is my deputy. We started this journey together in 2017 and have worked closely on many projects, so we both know how each other tick. We were both born in PL24, went to school at Biscavay and Foy, and I know we were both immensely proud and honoured to be given this wonderful opportunity. The greatest asset we have in this room is we connect all of Cornwall. We join the dots. There's not a house or a person in Cornwall who hasn't got one of us to call on. I want every resident to know, if asked, who their Cornwall councillor is, so that we can guide them to the help and services they need. We are the cogs in Cornwall's wheels, ensuring its residents can feel safe, understood and valued. We are like a well-oiled machine, and I'm not talking about Councillor Harris on a Saturday night. <laughs> I have one other announcement today relating to Neil Plummer, former Cornwall councillor who sadly passed away recently. He served on a range of councils from 1976. He was the first elected to Corm Cornwall Council in 1984 and then to Cornwall Council in 2009 until 2013, representing the Stivian uh, Electoral Division, where he served on the Strategic Planning Committee. I will ask Councillor Jenkin to speak before a minute's silence. Miraz, uh, per broat of e, the retribute them coeth da Neil Plummer, de Nagerno, Nepaver was in Misebral. 
It's a privilege for me to be able to pay tribute to my good friend Neil Plummer, Cornishman, who passed away in April. Neil will be remembered as a powerful voice for a better Cornwall, as a councillor, as a Cornishman, and as someone who always fought for greater Cornish recognition and promoted all aspects of Cornish identity and culture. Neil was a key MK activist, particularly through the 1970s and 1980s. This is how he met his future wife, Beatrice Curno, who he worked with on organising and promoting the annual Angove events at St Kevin every 27th of June, which coincidentally was his birthday. He was a great supporter of fellow MK candidates for election, including encouraging me to stand for the first time for Kerrier District Council in 1995. He also acted as my father's election agent in the 1983 general election. As a native of Stythians, Neil was first elected to Kerrier District Council in 1976. He was one of the first two MK councillors elected to the new district councils that had only been created three years before. Although only 24 at the time, another baby, um, and not long back from university, he was involved in many community groups, including the local rugby club and the St Stythians Male Voice Choir. A dedicated servant for his area, he represented local residents on Kerrier District Council for 33 years, all the way through to the abolition of the authority in 2009. He didn't always stand as an MK candidate, though. In 1984, Neil was first elected to Cornwall County Council as an independent and became an important part of the independent group. Neil then served on Cornwall Council after to that for its first four years when he did rejoin the Mebian Kerno group. As a councillor, he had a strong desire to protect the Cornwall that we all love and was particularly active on planning committees. He served as chairman and vice chairman of the planning committee on the old county council and was also the first chairman of the strategic planning committee in this authority. He always said that the first responsibility of planning was to provide the people of Cornwall with proper local homes and businesses so that our communities could thrive. Many will remember Neil as a singer. He had a fantastic tenor voice. And as well as solo performances, he sang with St. Stithians, Treverva and Marazine Apollo male voice choirs, often encouraging others to sing the White Rose in Cornish with him. In one debate in this very chamber, Neil made his point by bursting into song. Not something most of us today would be brave enough to do, if, even if we were allowed to. In a few minutes today, it's simply not possible to cover everything that he did for Cornwall and its culture and identity. He was involved with so many Cornish and Celtic organisations, celebrating Cornwall in everything he did. As a geologist, he was proud to have taken a pivotal role in ensuring the continuance of the Royal Geological Society of Cornwall, the second oldest geological society in Britain. He was a delegate to the Lorient Celtic Festival for many years, proudly carrying the banner of St Piran in the main parade. He was a bard of the Cornish Gorseth with the bardic name Gwyn Hadu, white and black, the colours of the Cornish flag. He was loved as much in Brittany as in Cornwall for his enthusiasm for developing twinning links between Cornish and Breton towns and villages. And wherever he went, he took the spirit of Cornwall, the flag of St Piran, and his wonderful voice with him. Neil O'Canus Mur Rag Kerno, a Rag Consul Kerno, a near Dal Gilvri and Otho, Rag Bos Dane Mas a Kerno, Ray Bowie Leif Fail Clewis in Naif. Neil was a great ambassador for Cornwall and for Cornwall Council, and we should esteem him for being an excellent man of Cornwall. May his angel voice be heard in heaven. We will now observe a minute's silence.
Thank you. Agenda item number seven, to receive and note the return of persons elected as Cornwall councillors. I will move and vice chairman uh, to second that the council receives and notes the return of persons elected as Cornwall councillors. I will now go to the vote. All in favour. All against. Any abstentions? Agenda number eight, minutes. There are two sets of minutes for council approval today. Minutes are for accuracy only. Agenda number 8.1, minutes of the meeting held on Tuesday the 23rd of March 2021. I will move, my vice chairman to second, that the minutes of the meeting held on the 23rd of March 2021 are ac correctly recorded and that they are, will be signed by the chairman. I will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Those minutes are now approved. Agenda number 8.2, minutes of the meeting held on Tuesday the 8th of April 2021. I will move, my vice chairman to second, that the minutes of the meeting held on the 8th of April 2021 are correctly recorded and that they will be signed by the chairman. I'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? And they are approved. Agenda number nine, election of leader. We now come to the election of leader, which will be undertaken in accordance with the council procedure rule 16.6. .6. As previously, please be aware that prior to the vote, each candidate for leader will be asked to make a brief speech on the reasons they wish to be nominated and their vision for the role. In the event that there are only one candidate, they will still be expected to make such a speech. Accordingly, I will seek nominations. Please may I now have nominations for leader. Councillor Harris. Thank you, Chair. Congratulations to you and the Councillor Rouse on your appointments. I will speak to you later about your comments about me. Um, <laughs> I am delighted to propose Councillor Taylor as leader of Cornwall Council. Councillor Taylor will be an excellent leader of the whole council. She has been a, a, an excellent leader of the Conservative Group, and I am sure that she will bring those same leadership qualities to the whole of this council in the next four years. I and the rest of the proposed cabinet look forward to working with and supporting Linda in the years to come to deliver for all the people of Cornwall the council that they want. And with that comment, I will close and allow a more loquacious seconder to say a few more words about Linda than I have. Thank you. Councillor Musto, are you seconding? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and um, can I say how proud I am to see uh, yourself, uh, uh, Councillor Giles and uh, Councillor Rouse, Jordan, Pauline, two fantastic members of our St. Austell and Newquay team sat in those seats. Um, and it is, I'm, I'm quite emotional about actually being Excuse my French. Right, um, I'm... <laughs> I'm glad I, I'm, I'm glad I, I'm glad I waited to do that until after I turned the microphone um, off. Um, I'm honoured to be uh, asked to second Councillor Taylor's nomination to be leader of Cornwall Council. I remember the days when I was first elected to Cornwall Council in 2014, when the Conservative group used to meet in a phone box and the prospect of ever leading this council seemed a long way away. Our changing fortunes since then have been in a good part due to Linda and her excellent leadership. 
I've followed Linda since her election in 2017 and at all times have been impressed by her forthright attitude towards doing business, her inclusive approach when it has come to the running of our group and her formidable understanding of all things County Hall. She led our group in embracing digital ways of working during the pandemic and had us all joined up and meeting virtually long before the official meetings caught up. And as the pandemic has eased in the recent campaign, Linda led by example from the front and was everywhere in Cornwall, whether it be visiting the most beautiful division in Cornwall, Mevagizzi and St. Austell Bay. Sorry, Linda, forget Carbis Bay. They should have had G7 in Mever. I'd love to get President Biden some chips from the Fisherman's Chippy. <laughs> or pounding the pavements from Long Rock to Lanston and everywhere in between. She was an inspiration to us all, and I can't wait to see this dynamic, enthusiastic, positive leadership applied to County Hall to really shake things up and give the people of Cornwall what they voted for. The first female leader of Cornwall Council and someone who I know has already put together a diverse, experienced and inclusive leadership team for our council, our duchy, and someone who is not afraid to stand up and make our voices heard whether that be to other councillors, to officers, MPs, or the Prime Minister himself. Linda will be the voice that our council, our Cornwall needs to be the best council it can be. So councillors, please join me in voting for Linda Taylor as our leader of Cornwall Council. Just one note of caution though, I heard that Linda has ordered a vegetarian pasty for lunch today. But don't let that put you off, we'll have to have words. <laughs> Are there any other nominations for Leader of the Council? No. Can I ask Councillor Taylor to make her speech? Thank you, Chair. I'm actually happy for the vote to go ahead and I would like to make my speech after the vote, please. Thank you. So, votes for uh, Leader of the Council. All four, please. Those against? Yep. Abstentions? Yep. So, can I... Can I so I declare that Councillor Taylor is the new leader of Cornwall Council. <laughs> Ready to get the nod from Mel. So, uh, leaders' announcements, including the leaders' appointment to the Cabinet, including the allocation of portfolios, and I think you want to do your speeches now, don't you? Thank okay. You. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council, for electing me as the leader of Cornwall Council. It is an honour to take my position with a number of firsts. The first time one group of councillors has overall control of the Council. I'm just savouring that sentence. And I am particularly pleased about being the first female leader of Cornwall Council. I would like... <laughs> I would like to thank the Conservative group who have worked together as a team and have been loyal, supportive and constructive on advice. I would like to take a moment to thank those Conservative councillors from the last administration who have not joined us today. Councillors David Atherthold, John Dyer, Gary Davis, John Crago, Simon Elliott, Geoffrey Evans, Jim Flashman, Tim French, John Hurd, Roger Harding, Mark Formosa, Richard Pugh, Richard Robinson and Sally Ann Saunders. You should not have favourites, but I am really going to miss the wisdom and wise words of Councillor Dave Biggs. His contribution to debate, his knowledge on the Constitution is unrivalled. 
and I personally want to take this opportunity to thank him for his support and loyalty. And I wish everyone else well in their lives outside of this council. I would like to introduce you to the Cabinet. <coughs> Councillor David Harris, Deputy Leader and Resources. Councillor Martin Alvey, Environment and Climate. <coughs> Councillor Barbara Ellenbrook, Children and Families. Councillor Phil Desmond, Transport. Councillor Ollie Monk for Housing and Planning. Councillor Carol Mould for Neighbours. Councillor Richard Piers for Customers. Councillor Stephen Rushworth for Economy. And Councillor Andy Fear for Adults. I am looking forward to working with this professional, skilled and enthusiastic team for the good of the people of Cornwall over the next four years. And now I want to thank you, the people of Cornwall. They wanted a change. Not for change's sake, but because the 47 Conservative councillors had a message that resonated personally to them. Our priority is first and foremost to you, the residents of Cornwall. The plan we presented had clear objectives. Value for money, investing in new and sustainable businesses, prioritising housing for local people, the introduction of a 20 mile per hour where there was the strong public support, cutting the unacceptable delays in assessment for children with additional needs, the delivery of first class skills and training, and we are going to be delivering on the vitality to our high streets through the town deals. We will continue to de deliver on the forest for Cornwall and will take care of the protection of our area of out outstanding natural beauty. Reviewing the new waste contract and a review of the community networks to ensure that they are delivering the connectivity with the people of Cornwall. I want to assure you this is the start of the Conservatives delivering on making that difference to our residents and the communities we represent. We will not make any promises until we have the full financial position on some of the bigger projects. And I can assure you that we have the talent and financial acumen within the Cabinet and within the Conservative group to, live, to deliver. As I said earlier, this is the first time there has been a majority administration since this <coughs> unitary was created. What we found when we were campaigning was a conviction that only the Conservatives could deliver. Residents have seen what the Conservative government delivered during the pandemic. Our Chancellor's fiscal intervention into the economy, those financial lifelines for so many people and businesses. The ability of our Prime Minister to procure the vaccine well ahead of the EU. And the incredible vaccination programme, which has been such, such a success here in Cornwall. And my grateful thanks to the NHS. Thank you, Leader. Uh, agenda item 11, appointment of committees. I will ask Councillor Taylor to move and Councillor Rich to second the recommendations set out on page 37 of the agenda. Chair, happy to move the appointment of committees. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, congratulations on your appointment as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, happy to second. Thank you. Thank you. I will now go to the vote. All in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? That's carried. Agenda item 12, allocation of seats and nominations to committees. I will ask Councillor Rich to move and Councillor Hannifer to second the recommendations that are set out on page 43 of the agenda. Please note the addition of Councillor Tudor on strategic planning. This is not showing on your paperwork. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, can, um, I can, uh, can propose this to Council um, that we adopt this, and I'd like to 
also thank uh, Matt Stokes as well for answering lots of questions. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations, Madam Chairman and uh, Vice Chairman on your election. Um, I'd like to second uh, the motion. Thank you. We'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? It's carried. Agenda item 13, substitutes list. I will ask Councillor Cole to move and Councillor Rich to second the recommendations set out on page 49 of the agenda. Please, uh, please to move the substitute list to be agreed. Thank you. Madam Chairman, happy to second. Thank you. We'll go to the vote. All in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? That's carried. Uh, agenda item 14, a state of Cornwall in the national context. Leader? So you're going to defer. Thank you, Chair. Um, I did indicate earlier that this is such an important announcement that I have asked that this is uh, made at the next full council. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item 15, programme of ordinary meetings. I will move my vice chairman to second the schedule of ordinary meetings of the council as set out on the agenda page. I will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? That's carried. Agenda item 16.1, licensing of hackney carriages, private hire vehicles and operators' applications fees. I will ask Councillor Jane Pascoe to move and Councillor Lennox Boyd to second the recommendations set out on page 55 of the agenda pack. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and may I offer my congratulations to both you, Councillor Rouse, and, of course, our leader, Linda. Thank you very much. Um, this should be a straightforward um, item. Um, perhaps I would like to just pay tribute to the past chairman of the Miscellaneous Licensing Committee, Sandra Haywood, who is no longer with us, but she, she ran an excellent committee for four years, never missed a meeting as far as I knew. I, I was aware, um, and this actual, actual recommendation has come out of one of the last meetings. Um, what, what I should say is that the members of the committee recognise that the taxis and the taxi trade provide an essential and important service to Cornwall, and what, it was important that we acknowledge the difficulties they had experienced in the last 12 months. Um, they, they had zero trade since March 20 um, due to the impact of the pandemic um, and there has been a massive amount of hardship in the trade. So I, I am therefore very happy to move the recommendation as set out. Thank you. Okay, so Lennox Boyd. Thank you, Chair, and congratulations to you both and to the leader. Thank you. I'm very happy to second. Thank you. So we will now go to the vote. So all those in favour? Any against? And any abstentions? That is carried. Well, we've flown through that. <laughs> so this is the end of today's business. So I'm going to thank you all for attending. Uh, please would you stay seated until your marshals indicate that you should leave. Uh, but thank you and um, look forward to seeing you soon.